Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp Fungicide and Pride Seed. Bernard Tobin back on the Corn School today, joined now by uh, Matt Chappell, Pride Seeds Agronomist. Matt, how's it going? It's going great, Bern. Sunshine. Guys are getting energized. The shed doors are opening up. It's uh, it's a positive feel, anyways, about the month of April and heading into May. Yeah. Hey, so what, you know, basically on the ground, uh, any differences this year? Obviously, we've got some challenges out there with uh, with the uh, pandemic, but from a seed delivery perspective and getting on the ground and in the field, uh, how are things shaping up? From our standpoint, you know, we've made great progress uh, bagging our seed, getting it out the door, on trucks, leaving the warehouse now. We're down to the wire on uh, getting seed into dealer and growers' hands. So I think we're in pretty good shape, you know, waiting on the remainder of uh, plot seed coming out of winter production. Things like that, you know, we're getting that all organized now. So I'm feeling pretty good about 2020. Yeah, I want to talk about uh, on-farm trials. You talked about plot seed and stuff like that. And, you know, we've done a lot of stuff over the years, and especially last year we did some really neat things on, on some trials and we did some reports on that. Um, just overall, what's the benefit for farmers, for growers to, to do an, you know, on-farm trials? I think there's a lot to be learned from the grower standpoint, Burn. Uh, pretty exciting when a grower really gets to see new genetics or see new seed treatments, uh, work with new uh, tank mix options, Any, anything like that that can really help add to their bottom line. Because I think when we launch new things, it's always it comes down to yield or profitability as a whole. So, you know, first of all we all want on farm hands on experience and i think there's nothing nothing that trumps that really now last year you on the corn from the corn perspective you you looked at flex versus fixed hybrids you know you looked at different populations on soybeans you looked at some really neat populations going really low and and uh so hey just talk about what you learned last year yeah so what we found actually is we kind of almost rewrote the the book on economic seeding rates, and it was kind of interesting, particularly when we looked at back at soybeans, uh, that really low population, well, it proved to be the most economical, and the yields hit that we uh, took from only cutting back, you know, 40, 60,000 seeds is, uh, you know, didn't make sense to bump the population up in that case. On the corn side, well, really, we, we started to classify genetics or characterize them and show that ability to either flex out in ear size or uh, where those certain hybrids were maintain their ear size. And I think this also can be a tool that we look at again in 2020 to help optimize nitrogen timing because those different hybrids, actually, they uh, can utilize uh, nitrogen rates at different times in their growth. And you talked about that. Hey, you know, if you if you did a trial one year, you maybe either you learned some or, or, or not a lot. Do it again. Exactly. I think too often maybe we didn't see the payback or we didn't get the benefit that maybe we wanted out of it. So we say, oh, that doesn't work, and we walk away from it. You know, it is our goal uh, specifically when we look at genetics of finding stability in hybrids that we really continue to test and test for multiple years. Uh, it's the same thing with on-farm research. I think a grower should try it on multiple fields, multiple growing seasons to really understand where they can put more money in their pocket and get some gains on on new products. Anything specific you're going to look at this year? You know, obviously, knowing what you did last year, you might repeat that, but anything that uh, you're, you're going to focus on this year? Yeah, so a, grower, or a colleague of mine, actually, he's uh, snowballed... Uh, a nice project uh, with some multi-hybrid testing, uh, fixed and flex stuff, and looked at timing, uh, an exceptional base fertility rate, but then coming in and wide dropping uh, nitrogen rates at different growth stages. I think this is something that we need to continue to build on and do again in uh, 2020. We'll also look at fungicide applications and timing on different hybrids as well as looking at it on soybeans. Uh, last year on soybeans, we did some different populations plus uh, fungicide applications as well. So that will be a goal to replicate that and get more sites of information for 2020. 
Yeah. Talk about a uh, final question, and that is how you work with growers. I mean, how can a grower connect with you, an agronomist, a, their seed dealer, about, hey, um, thinking about their farm, thinking about the genetics available, and how to set up a, you know, a test strategy? Yeah, exactly. That's perfect. Uh, that's, I think, working with someone like your dealer or your agronomist, uh, that we can really help find holes or what you are doing, your current practices, what we can add on to uh, maybe adjust timing, maybe adjust some of your management to uh, to get the most out of the crop. Um, sometimes it's not necessarily, oh, we need to just keep bumping the population and keep pushing nitrogen rates. No, it's it's so much more than that. Uh, when we understand genetics, we can cut the population back. And of course, too, we can also help you make sense of the data at the end of the season. Uh, pretty important that if you get that yield data there, that it's not just sitting on your yield monitor that we actually take it off, digest it, and maybe, you know, put the pieces of the puzzle together on what happened in the growing season. Why did it respond that way? And uh, and learn from the, for the future. Hey, and there's there's still time to make that call to, uh, to growers, to dealers like yourself, right? There sure is. There sure is. We're... Uh, we're always ready to go. We're looking forward for new projects. Uh, Want to work with guys. Really work to have a broad spectrum understanding of of getting the most out of your seed investment, especially. So, awesome. Hey, Matt. Um, thank you for taking the time, sir. Hopefully, uh, everybody will be out in the field. We might get an early spring, get some get some crop in the ground, and as I say, we'll, we'll be all be able to get out in the field before too long. 